accuracy begins with the with the phlebotomist. And if they can't provide us specimens that are going to produce accurate results, then it does no good to turn out the results to the physician because they can treat the patient with inaccurate results. High right. potassium levels um, can be critical. They have a critical value, at least at, in our laboratory, of 6.2. So if a level is over 6.2, then uh, the doctor probably wants to send that patient to the hospital if it's after hours or at least um, you know speak with the patient and, and get more information uh, and see if he needs to treat the patient because uh, you know it can affect the heart if, if the potassium level is too high so that's uh, you know something that can be a critical situation and many at least in our laboratory um, we receive many specimens uh, at the end of the day when the offices are closed. They're putting out their last specimens for the day. And so and when they arrive to our lab, um, when we actually perform the test, by the time it's completed, the, the physicians have already left their office and gone home for the day. So if we have a critical potassium level, then we need to call that to the physician on call. And that may or may not be the doctor who ordered the test. If it's the doctor who ordered the test and he knows the patient, then he may be able to use his judgment on whether you know that is an accurate result or not. If it's not the physician uh, who ordered the test and he doesn't know the patient, then you know he, he's not going to know if he needs to act or not. So to be sure, it's it's likely that he may send that patient to an emergency room in order to have that uh, level rechecked. And unfortunately, uh, sometimes that turns out to be a normal level when it's uh, tested in the emergency room and then the patient has had to go to the emergency room at midnight. The physician may feel embarrassed because he had the patient get up and go and you know it was actually a normal result and it really all started uh, with the phlebotomist because maybe they didn't do something correctly. Uh, you know, they didn't um, follow correct uh, phlebotomy procedures. They didn't draw the tubes in the correct order of draw because you cannot draw a lavender top tube before a gold top tube or tube with serum because the lavender top is full of potassium and it will carry over. So they need to know these things and how critical it is and how it may affect the patient. If they do not follow the uh, correct phlebotomy procedure or, collect or specimen preparation procedures and storage procedures, any of those steps can cause a specimen to have inaccurate results, especially with potassium, label, uh, potassium results. Um, that is something that we monitor fairly closely because uh, potassium can be affected by so many different areas, for instance. In um, phlebotomy, if they leave the tourniquet on too long, it can cause hemoconcentration, which can uh, mess up potassium results. Uh, if they don't let the alcohol dry, that can hemolyze some of the cells and uh, increase potassium results because red blood cells have 25 times more potassium inside the cell than outside the cell. So if they get roughed up a little bit and leakage occurs, then uh, that could affect the potassium results. Um, they should not allow patients to pump their fist because fist pumping um, causes potassium to be a release from muscles and that can also increase the result. So there's many things that can go wrong. Okay. Well, order of draw is important because all the different tube, uh, phlebotomy tubes that have uh, different colored labels uh, and indicate a different type of anticoagulant or substance in each tube, for instance, uh, Go top tubes uh, don't have an anticoagulant in them, however, they do have a clotting agent in them, which helps the specimen clot a little bit faster. A lavender top tube uh, has an anticoagulant in it, which um, also happens to have a lot of potassium in it. So, you would never want to draw a purple top tube or a lavender, whatever you call it, uh, tube before the go top tube or your red top tube, any tube that is going to that you're going to use uh, as a source of serum um, because you do not want that carryover of the potassium. Oh. It's very important that they mix each tube as it's collected. Uh, I know I've seen phlebotomists um, draw all the tubes and lay them on a counter 
and then take care of the patient and then go back and pick the tubes up and label them and then mix them. By then it's too late because if you have an anticoagulant in the tube, then you need to mix that tube immediately in order for it to prevent the beginning of the clotting process. So for instance, as you pull a lavender top tube out of the uh, um, vacutainer holder, then you need to mix that one while another one's spilling up and then pull that one out and mix it while another one's filling up. So you're mixing them immediately as you take them, as you collect them. Um, because if you, if you don't do that, then you start to get little microclots forming uh, in, in your tubes that really need to be anticoagulated. As far as specimen preparation goes, uh, uh, specimens that need to clot, they do need to let those clot for 30 minutes because they need to allow time for the specimen to form a good clot. But they should be centrifuged within two hours. If the specimens sit for too long, for instance, if they drew it at 10 o'clock in the morning and they didn't centrifuge it until 4 o'clock in the afternoon, that is going to affect some results. Most noticeably, the, the glucose level will decrease because the cells are still actually living and they are using up glucose as an energy source in the tube and depleting it from the serum. And so the glucose results will go down. I have read that it could go down as much as 10 milligrams per hour. Uh, the potassium level may go up due to leakage from the red blood cells. So it's important that uh, phlebotomists know that they do need to get those uh, tubes centrifuged within that 30 minute to two hour time frame. It's critical in order for us to give out accurate lab results. Another uh, area that is, is critical to get accurate lab results is the uh, specimen storage. Um, a lot of people think like if you have a steak that you want to cook later in the day, you wouldn't leave it out on the counter. Uh, you'd put it in the refrigerator until it's time to repair it. So uh, many people think it's a good idea to put those specimens in the refrigerator until the courier picks them up to deliver them. But it really isn't a good idea, especially for potassium levels, because when uh, platelets get cold, uh, they release potassium. And this can cause the level to go up in, in the serum. And uh, also red blood cells, there might be some leakage there too. So we ask the uh, people in the offices who do the phlebotomy and prepare the specimens, don't refrigerate them if you're gonna send, to, send them to the lab on the same day. They'll be fine sitting at room temperature as long as you've centrifuged them within that two hour period. If it's gonna be the next day before they're sent because perhaps they had to collect a specimen after the courier uh, had already left for the, for the day, uh, it's best that they remove the serum from that tube that it was collected in and place the serum in what we call a transport tube and store that in the refrigerator to preserve it, but preserving it away from the platelets and the red blood cells.